Hey, y'all. I'm Allison Asarch from Nashville, Tennessee. Hey, I'm Sean Fraser from the Ritzy Kids Hunters. This is Johnny from Rail Motor. Hey, it's Shane from Blind Season. Hey, it's Rob Stanier, and you can check out my music on all the streaming platforms. Check out my latest music on all the streaming sites. Check out my debut album on all streaming platforms. Check out our new debut album. Check us out on Spotify and Apple Music. And you're listening to our friends, Braggy and Curly. My favorite bands from Australia. My two favorite podcasters, Braggy and Curly. Braggy and Curly. On the Unfiltered and Undiscovered, Undiscovered Podcast. Hey there, everyone. And welcome back to the Unfiltered and Undiscovered Podcast, episode 137. We're back after a three-week siesta. Um, we've got uh, Braggy, of course, from Adelaide. We've got Rossi from Sydney, who must be crowing with the Roosters win in Vegas. And, of course, we've got Soren and the Spirit Molecule from Sweet Talk. What a panel. What a night. How are we all? Excellent. Pretty good. So good, mate. Good to be back. Thanks for having us. <laughs> and uh, we are just talking a little bit off air because... Um, uh, what we wanted to do is kick off 2024 with the three big tips that the, the three of us regular um, hosts had for 2024. We kicked off with uh, Rossi's big tip, which um, was Sydney was going to become the epicenter of music again in Australia. And we all probably decided that it never really lost being the epicenter. So a uh, tick for Rossi on, on his tip. Um, my tip, Lizzie Jack and the Beanstalk, still one of the greatest bands coming out of Wollongong and were going to become the indie darlings for Australia until they decided to um, get married and have some kids and so they're having the year off fundamentally. So it um, still doesn't stop them. So I don't think I've got my tip. And then... Really yes. And then... And um, I think it's despite Curly offering them some words of encouragement. Absolutely. <laughs> Those words of encouragement get me into trouble, don't they? And then, of course, we had Braggy who said that Sweet Talk would sweep the field in Tamworth this year. Um, and he just loves you guys. So we had to get you back. And of course, I found the article that backed up Rossi's tips. And I'll just read it out. It was um, one of the shows not to be missed. And if you haven't heard of Sweet Talk, the article, it's from ABC Double J. If you haven't heard of Sweet Talk yet, do yourself a favour and get around this six-piece band from the deep south of Melbourne. As discerning disciples of some of history's all-time southern blues, country, gospel, soul and rock bands, Sweet Talk have paid their dues, stitching together a rich tapestry of vintage influences. It sounds like Chat GTP got a hold of ABC <laughs> into something altogether <laughs> their own. Chat ABC. So that was the Tamworth Hotel gig, 8 o'clock on Saturday the 27th. So looks like Braggy got his hot tip as well. So you boys have say, been busy. Because if that's how, true, they're going to have to move to Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> so how was it, boys? How was Tamworth? Well, well, tell us about that. So good. Once again, third time round for us. So, yeah, it was really great. Good to see some familiar faces and always some new ones as well. Um, so I feel like the weather, Dave might disagree with me. I feel like the weather was maybe a little more forgiving this year, but maybe not. Oh, no. God, no. No? Yeah. Anyway, no way. A... I thought the Friday night was the hottest I have ever been on a stage, and then the Saturday was hotter. Okay. I mean, the, entire, the, entire, the entire audience were in uh, basketball um, singlets and shorts. I've never seen yeah. rock and rollers in shorts before. Um, Maybe I'm brutal. running cooler as I get older, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, boys, I, I, I was at White Adelaide on Monday and it was 40 degrees. Yeah, wow. it was 40 roughly in Tamworth when we were there. Wow. The whole time. Yeah. That's like, that's so a bearable 40. Yeah, that's oh, that's putting the if you got the Liz Paul, that's bending that out. Of, that's making that go out of tune. Forty degrees, I would reckon. Funny you should say that. We did have difficulties. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. The, any of the yep. Gibsons always going to happen. struggled through it. Um, so yeah. we had a couple of the Tamworth, both Tamworth shows were a bit wonky, just with tuning. Like we were great, and uh, and then we played <laughs> on the Sunday night. Uh, we kicked off our Charlie Crockett tour 
on the Sunday oh, night yes. in Newcastle. And that was brutal as well. It was it was actually almost difficult to stand inside the venue. It was that hot. So we actually watched most of it on the balcony outside at uh, Bar on the Hill. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Newcastle. Newcastle um, Uni. Sorry. Yeah, yeah yes. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Bar yeah. on the Hill, a very famous venue. Yeah, so right, Charlie right. spent the whole, the whole uh, first half of the set in a leather jacket, polyester shirt, cowboy boots and 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 jeans and you could it looked like a tap had been turned on and down his wrists they were just pouring finally took the jacket off about an hour into the set and he was just joking around but he was just like spraying water every, like sweat everywhere wow. you know absolutely brutal but uh he never takes wow. the hat off which I, I respect um so yeah he was uh he was a consummate professional getting through the show despite just dripping Got to be committed to the costuming. Yeah, you do. Yeah, that's fair enough. So, but, so is, he, is he from down south in America? Is he from like the warmer places, Texas. or is he? Yeah, so hey, he should, Texas. He should be okay with that. That heat, maybe not quite. Yeah, I thought he handled yeah. it well. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's just committed right. to the to the uh, the steez, you know. But they're all Texans. Mm. San, uh, San Benito and uh, Dallas and um, Austin, I think they're based in now, but they're all, all from all over the place. They were talking about a four hour drive like it was nothing. I mean, four hour drive rehearsal, no big deal. Oh, yeah. cool. Okay. And they're good, cool yeah. guys. Yeah. Great yeah, bunch of bet. fellas. Yeah. <laughs> Great crew in general. The whole, whole operation they had was really an enlightening experience sort of seeing how they operate at that level for us. So a lot of fun, but we learned a lot at the end as well and came out a better band at the end of that, that oh, whole run. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That was so, that was so slick and, and everything moved so well with them. And we got along, hung out with the band a lot, the uh, blue drifters. Um, and at one stage towards the end of the run, we had a, uh, we had a longer set at Corin Bar at Cold Creek, which is outdoor little festival. And the drummer Mayo joined us for the whole set. He was going to come up and do a couple of songs on percussion with us. And then, as we were setting up the rig just before we played, he's like, "Hey, I might just stay up here." I'm like, "Go for it!" So, 45 minutes, hardly heard the songs before he just improvised along with us, and it was just fantastic. Oh, so, we've yeah. already played. We were, you know, three shows in, we were playing with the band members, and it was really That's cool. Awesome. It's really cool. That's very cool. That just, yeah. That's one of the best things, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, not that I would know community. that. Shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah for everyone to, to you know, you, you can you can find it's not always like that. Um, mm -hmm. And I've I've found that it's it's, all, it's the, the bands that are just tasting success and they're on the way up can kind of be the more difficult ones on the road mm -hmm. to work with. Um, yeah. But the ones that have been there a long time and they've paid their dues and they know what it's like to be where you are for a long time, they're always so great. And uh, they were just yeah. so, you know, they're so so giving and like lots of really long, deep conversations till late in the night about music and uh, touring and, and yeah, spirit molecules and yeah, I, I can imagine life at large, yeah, 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 for sure. I, I, Rossi shared so many stories, and we've talked to um, some of the old indie guys back from the eighties, moving on, and you hear stories that support bands not even knowing or getting to know the the main the main acts and it was like a, an us and them thing and the support band would go out there and try and blow them off stage just by being exceptional it made them better artists of course um besides you know the story that you've just shared is one that you would like to think would happen more and more often where the bands mm. hang out together they feed off each other they you know, and that generates, I would imagine, a much more positive experience. Rossi, have you got thoughts mm. on that? Look, I, yeah, I'd agree. I think I think it's more and more like that these days because in the old days there used to be like a bigger productions, there used to be lots of stuff, but now people are a lot more collaborative. They're sharing gear, they're smaller stages, you're in closer quarters, all that sort of stuff. And I think I think the guys are right. Yeah, like I'm finding that bands get along, you know, much better than they used to anyway. <laughs> I think we talk we talk about this a bit actually. I think at the top of like if you want to be successful in the industry these days, there's so the margins are so tight. There's no room for dickheads up there, yeah. um, and there's no room for like not being professional. There's no room for just being a fuck up. 
you know oh, yeah and like blowing a show because you're too pissed or whatever like you've got to you've got to get up there and perform because if you don't do it somebody else will you know and i think that's a big part of of it we're all working hard and um yeah things have changed it's like it feels like there's more of a no dickhead policy around the trap yeah the well i guess and that's even not, probably not... the last 15 years yeah i guess that those you're not just sitting back and making money from your record anymore you actually got to fucking go yeah. on tour so you better you better yeah. have your shit together and be nice otherwise you're not going to make that money everyone yeah. gets to meet you yeah. at the merch table that's, and the that's promoters it. are there and stuff right and and you know you, you don't want to rub anybody the wrong way and um you know think one of our sort of mottos is to be the nicest most professional band going you know and uh and that's that's a reflection of the people in the band really but like we kind of stick to that and, and lo and behold the band we just toured with they were also like that so mm. there's something right know, going on there got the right the democratization model. the social media stuff makes it easier that if you ba behave badly it gets out very quickly yes sure does. Mm. there was yeah, a show you. there was a show at woi yeah. i recall last year yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i know the one you're talking about rossi and didn't that blow up big time in a very very short mm -hmm. uh, span i don't know if we know what you're talking about yeah what, what, what's this uh, <laughs> we'll tell you later <laughs> <laughs> okay. we'll, we'll so it it. <laughs> hey, speaking to your point about about uh blowing off you know uh, blowing away the, the the headlining act the thing about charlie's band is that that wouldn't have been possible anyway because yeah. their act is so good like yeah. they were on the bar in the hill show we were just we were gobsmacked by how yeah. incredible the arrangement of the set was the quality of the songwriting the quality of the musicianship within the band and when they really locking it's like they do some stuff that is just outrageous from an arrangement yeah. sense of uh, point of view and from like a groove point of view really creative stuff and um like they just they just know they're really good right so um we just played as well as we could and that didn't and that oh, i i feel like we both over the tour got like progressively better yeah. as the tour went yeah, on yeah. because we were kind of feeding off each other a little bit yeah that happens um, that's a great thing definitely. i love it when that happens i love that but like yeah i think i think you know that yeah a lot of bands back a period a while ago thought that coming out here was almost a holiday because it's so far away and removed from the rest of the world mm. that it didn't matter but now mm. yeah they bring their a game and i like that it makes mm. me happy every time i want to see you've always got to be on time. now yeah yeah. yeah 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 and charlie he's hyper aware of like the position he's at i think um because he's been working in so hard for so long and he's yeah. just kind of made it work so i feel like they really respect the position that they're in because they've come from that hard grafting working musician background but now they're in mm. now they're in australia like how good is this so they really take it seriously wild, isn't that, it? <laughs> yeah and that really rubbed off on us because we take it seriously too you know so it was kind of cool to see that okay the guys that are at the top end of town they really take it seriously and they you know mm. they're doing I all the right things I've been talking to people about about a couple of different things, but one of them is that it's big from there to there. Yeah, it's not mm. that far. It takes a long time, and incremental the incremental rise is on. But like, yeah, uh, like I was talking to someone the other day, and they're they're a producer, and they were talking to a guy called Chris Thomas. And Chris Thomas is a famous producer. He did Never Mind the Bollocks, right? Oh, yeah. He lives in Sydney for three. He also he played keyboards on some of the White Album and produced it when George Martin went on holidays, right? Wow. And this guy's in Sydney and he's kind of yeah, walking, breathing the same air as us. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, it kind of blows your mind that these people are, that that yeah, like the people that Charlie would have played with are people that we would have thought once were unattainable, right? Mm. He sh yeah. he shook Willie Nelson's hand. So yeah, we like, shook the hand of the man who shook Willie Nelson's hand. Yeah. And that's what I'm talking <laughs> about. Every day, it's yeah. not that far away, yeah. is it really, when you think about it? You know? yeah. Just a bit of luck going your way. You never know where you're going to end up. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I, but have you shaken the hand of Chad Morgan? <laughs> well, you'd have to enlighten us here, Curly. Chad well, Morgan's been here for a long time, isn't he? How long is the Sheik from Scrubby Creek. Yeah. The Sheik from Scrubby. Oh, 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 oh. 
Well then, we've lost Soren. Yeah, nah. we've lost him. But um, that's one. There's some Google for you. So after the show, some homework. Certainly, I've got a list. Certainly, I've got a list. One of the most attractive men that was um, a big Australian country music success story, and still playing against, nearly ninety, I think. Yeah, against wow. is he still alive? I thought yeah. he was dead. No, no, no. I did a wow. gig with him last year. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. incredible. He so. likes the ladies. That was the funniest <laughs> thing. He likes the ladies. <laughs> now, but speaking of big names, uh, in a couple of weeks, well, t- I think it's twenty eighth. It's the last week in Mar- weekend, I think. You guys are going to the Byron Bay Blues Fest. Hey. I just checked out the lineup yeah. for that, and I mean, I know if I was you guys, I'd be, it, I'd be keen to like to Tedeschi, Tedeschi Trucks Band. Oh, yeah, that's good. that'd be cool. Killer, definitely ben, number one yeah. on our list. Definitely number one. Mm-hmm. Thought it would be Ben Harper. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. and I saw Tom Jones. Yeah, Is that right. I'm all over yeah. that as well. I wouldn't what mind. a voice! What a voice, yeah. man! Yeah, that'd be. Crazy. I mean, one of our one of our biggest song songwriting influences, probably and guitar playing influences, melodic influences, is Taj Mahal. Yeah, um, yeah. he used to play oh, with yeah, Ray Cooter too, yeah. in writing Rising Suns, and actually Taj and Ray just did an album last year, and Ray Cooter is massive for us as well. So, um, yeah. Taj is going to be there. Ricky Lee Jones is another Ricky big songwriting Jones. influence. Yeah. Um, and so, the wife, uh, the Allman Bet Brothers, one of my huh? Oh, to the Esky Brothers, yeah. The you say Allman, Allman Brothers, Allman Bet, 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 Allman David, yeah, Greg's son, Devin. Devin. Right. Yeah, Greg Allman's son. Allman. Yeah, it's crazy because the That'd be cool. like it's Good way sure. and, yeah. That's a bit confusing. Yeah. Is that Sher son yeah. as well, or is no, that the other Allman? I have no idea. That's he's playing Allman. Question. <laughs> That's good question, Bragi. Yeah, I forgot about that That's piece of trivia. Entirely. That's Dwayne Allman. That's Dwayne. Wow. wow. And, but and... but truck Derek trucks is related in there too, isn't he? Somewhere. Yeah, I think he was the, the son of the drummer. He's, which he's the drummer's son. Uncle. Yeah. Drummer's son. Yeah. Uncle. Which yeah, is son. Uncle that... What a son. All oh, right. That, that'll be smoking. I'd really like to see that, actually. Oh, man. They're, they're, yeah. just, they're, the, they're yeah. the best jam band on the planet, and they will be until they p- pull up stumps. There's no bad, doubt about yeah. it. They do things. They're the best. And um, I'm actually on a wait list to try and get tickets um, for uh, the show down in Melbourne. Um, okay. Which I keep missing him because <laughs> they keep coming up and I, I miss him because everyone's trying to get tickets. But I'll go see him again here yeah. um, as well as I've got a sneaking sus- 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 suspicion that there's going to be some form of a jam at this Blues Fest. And I think yeah, it's yeah. Our, definitely our um, intention to try and get a part of that, isn't it, Dave? Oh, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, so you know, you- one of the big things about the Blues Fest because we grew up going to those festivals and it's the, it's the guests people coming and sitting in on a, on a set. So yeah. my uncle, Dom Turner from the Backsliders, he's played with Derek Trucks in the past. I think that was in Adelaide somewhere. Um, and, I, you know, Derek and who, who knows who's going to jump up with them there, yeah. here. But, um, you know, we've yeah. got a bit, we've got some plans in that, in that area as too. Uh, we're going to have somebody pretty cool come and join us for a song both nights we play. So, you know, that's all part of it. So seeing what collaborations occur is half the fun. That's going to be awesome. And you guys are on Thursday and Friday, I thought I saw. Is that right? Yeah. First, yeah. Correct. Right. So yeah. you're going to have the, the, the rest of the weekend to to hang out. Yeah. yeah. So that's going to be awesome. So we're going to stay stick around for Saturday for sure. Um, and that's when Tedeschi Trucks is on and stuff. So, yeah, Saturday's just as a, as a punter, really. A you punter with an all-access pass. You've got to keep on working the room all the time you're there, man. Uh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. 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 We got no trouble with that, to be honest. Yeah, I didn't think so. You got to. It's, it's the job. There's six of us. Oh. <laughs> if someone has an off night. There's five other people to sub in. <laughs> I only went there once. You know what else I really like was the rock, was the rock quiz. Yeah. Because I'm in love with. Well, I'm in love with Julia Zamiro. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. We actually had. We met Brian from Rock Quiz the other week. Oh, Brian. Yeah. yeah. 
He's it was funny. the first person at Riverboats to literally greet us as we arrived. And, um, yeah. yeah. We hit it off. He's a uh, fab, like a great guy, very knowledgeable, like a yeah, great old, knowledgeable uncle. Um, <laughs> had some great conversations and he worked the mic for us as an MC as well, hyped up the crowd. So it was uh, great to hang out with him, actually. That's cool. Mate, you guys are really on fire at the moment. You've got some momentum happening. So when's the next lot of music going to come out? I, I guess is the question. What are you doing off off the back of all this work you've been doing? We have many, many we've got big plans, don't we, Dave? It's sort of um Yeah. It's it's not exactly in chronological order at the moment, but uh we're doing we've got a plan and I think the the overarching idea is to get an album out next year. For this year we've got a single coming out. Probably, what do you reckon, Dave? By like seven weeks, eight six weeks, six weeks, we six, seven weeks, yeah. something like that. Yeah, we're literally just waiting on the master to return from LA. So yes, um, that so could you be can tonight, expect that tomorrow morning. Cool. Mm. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll, so that's that's hot skill of love. We can, yeah. we can announce here that it's called hot. I think this is an exclusive, boys. Oh, yeah. cool. oh all right. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Curly, Curly, write this down. And just be careful when yeah. you're on the Golden Guitars red carpet. <laughs> <laughs> you have to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is Make sure you, because none of the other guests that were there said anything about us. Guys, <laughs> we'll anything. have to shout you out. Yes. Uh, yeah. Shout out to the boys uh, on Unfiltered. I, I consider that to be a done deal, fellas. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so what's, oh, it, uh, what's, uh, what's it what's it called, Dave? The song. Hot skillet love. Hot skillet love. Oh, Hot love skillet it. love. My God. Yeah. yeah. Which is a few yeah. degrees warmer than our last single, Warm Love. Warm you see love. that yeah, the yeah. love is getting hotter <laughs> as we yeah. get better as a band. <laughs> the next yeah. one's just going to be Inferno, uh, something or other. Yeah. Burning love. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the old um, the old cover. So, um, is there any doco in relation to either Tamworth, uh, the the support gig, or what you're doing at Blues Fest? Is there any more docos coming out? We made or? another documentary about ourselves. Uh, funnily enough, I'm glad you asked uh, about no, the documentary that no one ever asked for. Thank you. Someone finally <laughs> yeah. asked about it because we, you know, and there is, isn't there, Dave? There certainly is. We yeah. got something. So, well, so Hot Skillet Love was done in the last sessions that we did uh, Warm Love and a couple other songs, Pepperoni Prince, that'll come out sometime. So th those that cluster of songs, four songs, will release as an EP probably in the next three or four months. But we're going into a writing phase now to write towards the album. While uh, there was an American, I can't even remember if this had happened last time we were on here, but there's an American um, songwriter that we've been fans of for many years named Robert Ellis. And he came out and he was touring and we kind of reached out because we wanted to talk to him about possibly producing us sometime and it just so happened that he was in town that he was available on a day that we had off and that he wanted to jump in the studio and so we had like five days between playing in sydney to going in the studio with him in melbourne um so we flicked him a demo we had pre-production meetings over what went his hotel for a day before we, we recorded just took us through some lyric ideas and some arrangement ideas and then we jumped in the studio with him on monday late december and we tracked one of our songs crazy and it just turned out so so great we're so happy with it um because yeah. son and i have produced everything up to this point and engineered it and in, in many cases mixed it so that's really stressful when you're also writing the songs and playing yeah. guitar so it's 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 a it's it's a and not a particularly fun experience, for, especially for myself, who I'm often in the control room, hitting record on a tape machine and running into the other room, picking up the guitar and trying to play. So it's like, it's um, it, that, that can be really shitty. So, so, oh. it, but but so we've we've hired engineers the last couple of recordings, which has been good and bad. And then having a producer though, that's where we're like, ah, oh, this is it, right? Mm. Like somebody who can have a bit of context. Like this song, crazy, we wrote. 18 months ago probably maybe two years ago got it together and then toured it for 12 months i mean how do you look at something critically that you're so connected with that you've been playing the same way every night for 12 mm. months so robert mm. can come in and go hey i reckon you should try this cheeky chord here or this line could be stronger to reinforce the narrative you know so that was really phenomenal and then he actually played piano on it as well so oh, um craig played well so he played piano on it 
we cut it all live, no click track, everyone in the same room. Um, and and what you're hearing on the record is essentially that, that, that live performance. Tani did maybe four vocal takes and Robert comped it. So it was super, super quick. We had it mixed within seven days and mastered within seven days. So that's that's actually something that we've recorded recently that probably won't come out until after we've finished that the previous EP that we recorded. I can't that song, that. Crazy, yeah, that song, Crazy, we did make a documentary about. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a whole, it's a whole new level. And, and he's, he's an incredible, incredible musician. And we just hit it off with him. We had, he understood what we were trying to do deeply because um, he's yeah. like, he's an encyclopedia of music. He's a phenomenal guitarist, phenomenal pianist, phenomenal drummer, crazy songwriter, you know, like just real genius level type stuff. So he kind of, yeah, it was, it was a real match made in heaven. So uh, we realized we found our guy. It was total like pitch. Like we had no idea if it was going to work and it, and it did. Um, so he's going to come back in December and produce the record that we're currently wow, writing. Oh man, that is such an asset. Wow. But just that, that whole story, everything's just happening and, yeah. and it's all synchronicity. It's just, um, it's just amazing. Ever since Braggy picked you to be the, his number one pick, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, to yeah. be honest, we're taking every opportunity that is is thrown our way. Like that's one of our things. It's just like let's yeah. do it. It's going to be hard to take the Monday off to organize all this stuff, but let's just do it because well, it's not like we don't arm and art. You know, we just that's what you got to do. Yeah, mm. yeah, totally. It's fantastic. Yeah, totally. What a great so, result. Yeah. Great result. All right. Hey, um, so guys, we didn't tell you this when you um, agreed to come on the podcast, but we now do a trivia segment. And seeing that we've had used the word trivia and then we use the word Brian Nankervis and Rock Quiz, I think it's a great time to bring it in. Yeah, so Braggy so has been doing I, a I ran out of the trivia. who am I, so now I do trivia. Right. Yeah. And so what it is, what, what it'll be, it'll be Sweet Talk versus Curly and Rossi. <laughs> All right. Great, now, Dave. We've got this, mate. Now it's just <laughs> you got a pen. You need to probably need a piece of paper, a pen, or your phone. I don't know. Yeah. It's only there's only four. I'm questions. ready, Braggy. It's only four questions, but each question's worth five points. All right. Okay. Okay. So it's gonna be it's gonna be out of twenty. Um, the first three of the of the four questions, there's like five parts to it each. That's why they're worth five points. The last question uh -huh. is just worth five points. Okay. Nice Are you ready, Rossi? Are you ready? Ready to crash and burn. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The first one is this is who's missing from the three piece. Okay. I'm going to give you the two names. You got to have the third one, right? Okay. First one is Stuart Copeland, Gordon Sumner, and. Uh, mm. Next one is Florence Ballard, Mary Wilson, and as Braggy just takes a sip of his beer and leaves us in the loop. Yeah. Hey, you season. enjoy this. You enjoy this. <laughs> I love doing this. You ready for the next one? Uh, sure. Yeah. Dusty Hill, Frank Beard, and mm -hmm. How, how, mm. how. <laughs> Rossi, I hope you're on fire, mate. I'm just putting question marks. <laughs> uh, Rossi, Rossi's an encyclopedia when it comes to this shit. It's hard to beat. <laughs> Fourth one is Mitch Mitchell, Jimi Hendrix, and... Yep. Okay. Question mark. And the... <laughs> right. I've got a I'll question specifically for you, though, Curly. <laughs> uh, and the last one for this first first lot is Bill Black, DJ Fontana, and oh, oh. okay, no. Sorry, can I say that? Fire. Can I say that I've been the stage guy for one of those? Oh, oh, who haven't you been stage guy for? Except I'm not <laughs> feeling confident here, guys. Um, okay, next question, Curly. I never I'm, do, Siren. Curly, yeah. I, made, I made this question for you, Curly. It's all about okay. the eighties. It's all about the eighties. Okay. All right, Tony Curl, this is your specialty subject. 
<laughs> Ron S. Pino. Oh, I'm going to give you five things that happened in the 80s, right? Yeah. Five major things happened in the music industry. I just, you just got to put them in order of when they happened. Okay. There's okay. Oh, wow. I remember any of this happening. Okay. Okay. MTV launch. When MTV launched first. That's one. The next one is Live Aid. The next one is when CDs first outsold vinyl LPs. That happened mm-hmm. in one year in the 80s first. Mm-hmm. The fourth one is the release of Thriller. And the last one is John Lennon being shot. Oh, I know what year that was, at least. I'm struggling this one. All right. I think I've got that. that one. You got that? Okay. Now, this is my favorite section. This is cryptic band names. All right. <laughs> <laughs> is there a theme? Starts off so, so give it, give them a, an example, Braggy. Use sweet talk as an example. Uh, sugar conversation. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be your cryptic name, okay. maybe. That's just off the top of my head. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Nice freestyle there, Braggy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you ready for the first one? I love this one. Corridor and porridge. <laughs> what was that? Corridor and porridge. Mm-hmm. Uh, Start with an okay. easy one. Yeah, even I got that one. Okay, next one is noise amongst the flowers. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, yep. It's a hard quiz. It's a hard quiz. It's no easy stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, I like it. Keep it coming. One. Third one is bubbly chocolate will. <laughs> like will, as in the name will. Yeah, bubbly chocolate will. Uh, <sighs> next one is re- <laughs> next one is repeating male rabbits. <laughs> Repeating male Male rabbits. (laughs) What? (laughs) The last one, you're going to love them. The last one is just bought online. Just bought online. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And and then there's one more question, boys. And the last one is what did... What do these bands have in common? Okay. Hopefully you know all these bands. I'm sure you guys will. You guys are nice. Uh, the Monkees, Van Halen, The Foo Fighters, Talking Heads, and Bread. Remember them? David Gates. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm, so what do they have in common? What do they all have in common? The Monkees, Van Halen, Foo Fighters, Talking Heads, and Bread. Wild get on that. Okay. Uh, uh, ready? All right. They um, yeah. sweet talk. Don't seem confident, Rossi. I hope you. I hope you've done. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like the. Uh, I feel like the questions in this were targeted towards a slightly older demographic. Than the <laughs> yes. <laughs> No, thank you. Joe, Depending on the, the day, the questions in this were made up by someone from a slightly older demographic. <laughs> yeah. but, but someone yeah. who knows no what nerd, it. yeah, what nerds you are in musical influence. Yeah, these guys. And, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. If you don't I know, I don't them, think you, you bloody any should. of these groups were active while we were conscious beings. <laughs> <laughs> but we do know yeah. music history, so let's find out. Okay, Stuart yeah, Copeland, yeah. Gordon Sumner, and Andy Summers. Well, Andy. Andy Summers, correct? Of course. Did you get that, boys? Rossi and I, yeah. That's one the all. only one I got. One all. I think me Florence too, Ballard, man. Mary Wilson, and Diana Ross. Yes, the Supremes. Uh, okay, it was an old one. I know it was old. That's before my time, even. Dusty Hill, Frank Beard, and. The Reverend Billy Gibbons, guys. Reverend yeah. Billy Gibbons. Yeah. 
DJ yeah. Tom, baby. Yeah. Mitch Mitchell, Jimi Hendrix, and Chaz Chandler. No. no. Noel Redding. No, yes. Ooh. Noel Redding's a bass player. Yep. Soren's yeah. propping you up, Dave. Going well. I'm getting way more than I thought I would. <laughs> Bill Black, DJ Fontana, and the, the guitarist in Elvis's backing band, Scotty Moore. Ah, yep. Tough one. What's the score? Yikes. Um, I got one. Got three for round one. Four, four is pretty four. good. Yeah. I think that's great, yeah. Four, three. Okay. 80s yeah. timeline. This is how it happened. John Lennon was shot in 1980. Yes. yes. Uh, MTV debuted in 81. No. Damn. I'm out. Thriller came out in 82. Yeah. I got, yeah. Live Aid was 85. Yeah. No, I got that CDs, one. CDs first outsold things in 1988. I nearly put wow. in there, when did, uh, what year did Millie Vanilli get their um, Grammy taken off them? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was 88, wasn't it? It was 89, I think, or something like that. 89. All right. Well, next I, one. I just had yeah, so Braggy. So, and Thriller around the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had, had one of them around the wrong way. Okay. Yeah, I just I just got the year for MTV score- wrong. Every other year was Me too. on. Okay, we'll just score yourselves. Okay, so I'm going to give myself Play four. At the end. Yeah. Okay, the cryptic band. I'll give name. myself ten. <laughs> Cor- <laughs> <laughs> Corridor and Porridge. Did you get it? Hall of Notes. Hall of Notes. Hall of Notes. Noise amongst the flowers. Soundgarden. Soundgarden. Yes, very good. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Nice. Bubbly chocolate. Will. Aerosmith. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh, oh. oh that's tough. Uh, that's tough, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this one, this one is a very eighties. I think sort of kind of band. Maybe Rossi's. Pet Shop Boys. Repeating male rabbits. No. Uh, Echo and the Bunnymen. Oh, oh, Echo and the Bunnymen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And just bought on. This is my favorite. Just bought online. A new order. Oh, (laughs) another one of my all-time favorite bands. See, I'm trying to match up the words here, Braggy. Like the amount of words. Yeah. So, (laughs) little, you know, off-putting there, but I appreciate it. Now, to get the last one, six months, we'll know the rules better. Um, I I, I put that they've all been featured in The Simpsons. No. I suggested that they all had a band member named David. Correct. They all had a singer named David. Wow. (laughs) David's got the David question. (laughs) That's right. Dave got the Dave question. "Hmm, Did he produce that shit? All right. So you had David David Jones sang for the Monkees. David Lee Roth sang for Van Halen. Uh, Dave Grohl, David Byrne, and David Gates. Yeah. Wow. Very wow. good. Okay. Great call, mate. I think that my guy's having a line, Soren. Yeah, I think, I think, I got I think between you. Between I reckon, you. yeah, we're batting pretty good here. So, Rossi, I got seven. So, what did you get? Nine. No good. Uh, uh, we got eight. six, seven, eight, plus five. We got 13. Oh. oh. Well done. The guests win again. My God. That was a good one. Down. Down. Took Rossi down. <laughs> uh, so hot skillet love. Let's get back to sweet talk yeah. and the music. So so hot skillet love. I've just got to love that too. Once again, you're just stepping up the game, aren't you? You're stepping up the heat. <laughs> and, and then EP and album. So so much to look forward mm-hmm. to. So after Blues so Fest. Mm. Yeah. In the documentary. We're writing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll write a doc. Well, actually, one of the things we're going to do is make more documentaries about ourselves. So, but very short ones for, for uh, Instagram and TikTok and things. So, we're going to do a lot of uh, social media content stuff. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. like little little clips and little behind the scenes things. Um, kind of just need some time off the road to write um, and develop new material, you know? Like, it's really yeah. hard to write when you're uh, in traveling as much and playing as much as we have been over the last 12 months. Yeah, um, but we do. We'll, we'll hit the road again or start playing again in September. Um, 
uh, we've got some really uh, some other kind of cool releases coming out around then and um, play a bunch. And then we've actually just announced a European tour for December. Where you go? Oh, wow. At, at the go. moment, we've locked in. <laughs> well, we've got Spain, Belgium, Germany, and Netherlands pretty much 99% locked in at this stage with That's hopefully fantastic. maybe something in london or yeah so we'll definitely keep yeah. you posted that's fantastic yeah that's that's, really that's awesome they're gonna love you they're pretty, yeah, yeah we're pumped they, they're gonna how did that come about just because do they do you have a fan base there at the moment or no um well it's sort of we've been it's a funny story we've been working with the grant recently and um he had a contact over in europe yeah that we sort of got talking about no more than i would say a month ago dave mm -hmm. and somehow yeah. um we got in contact with uh a guy from teenage head music over in europe and uh, we we're able to put it together pretty quickly and put it together for between december 4th and december 22nd at this stage so boom we're going to christmas uh we're spending christmas in europe hopefully dave Oh, bit of snow maybe. that's just that's yeah. just saying saying yes to everything isn't it it's just yeah. making shit sure happen is. i mean yeah that's it like we we figure well we could wait till uh, uh you know a warmer month next year but that's 18 months away like our big thing is 2024 feels like a real big building year you know like we're going to be writing for this album we're building an album we're building our team around us you know we're, we've we've kind of really locked in our our touring agency and our labels and things like that so it's about building for 2025 and so we figure mm. if we can get over to those markets and, and and plant some seeds and get some some of europe moving um and then head back there next year you know it's 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 a better opportunity for us so um yeah. i don't feel like we're we don't, we don't feel like we're operating on on borrowed time but like you mentioned the word momentum before and we're pretty aware that we have it at the moment. And um, the thing about momentum is to keep it rolling, you just got to keep moving. You know, yeah. the second you stop running, you, you're dead. So, yeah, we're just like, fuck it, let's let's just do it. And we love doing this, right? So, like, why wouldn't we want to go to Europe in December and play a bunch of shows? And so if the call comes, like, when you, like, the big tour comes, if they say, you know, how's it going to go? Are you guys just going to up stumps and, and do it? You know what I mean? Uh, definitely. Yeah. Have you got? Have you got? No like, doubt. And things? You're just gonna go. No, <laughs> we're going. You're gonna jump. That's what's good. We're ready now. for anything. I feel like we're really in a I position, partic particularly after the run that we've done at the first, the first half of this year or the first quarter of this year. I really do feel like we're ready for anything. So, um, yeah, whatever comes our way, I think we're up for. Mm, that takes well, quite, a, quite a few of us are in pretty unique positions with our work scenario as well where we kind of work autonomously in and we can work anywhere um so That's we great. both work from home or often on the road as well and nick's the same our drummer um yep. so we can kind of you know if we had to if we had to split our time between two things then we could do a yeah. lot of what we need to do on tour like we do a lot of work mm. on planes <laughs> and, and, and you can keep your foot in both camps yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah until it's such a point that the tipping point is that we're actually making enough money to justify completely reducing whatever else we're doing on the side you know yeah. and that's the dream that's the goal and that's why we're pushing so hard and why yeah. we're saying yes to everything because any missed opportunity could be the one that is the thing that breaks you you know so mm. um yeah going for it yeah, when so, things are falling into place, so hey, you got it. You know, you're right, boys. You just got to keep going with the downstream. Hey, yeah, yeah. Blues, yeah. blues fest is the big one. That's the start. Blues That's fest it. is going to be it's good because so many people are going to see you there, and so many other acts are going to see you there, aren't they? And, the, and people the, associated with those acts. The people who get you will be there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's, you're perfect for Blues Fest. Yeah. That's gonna. Oh, it's our crowd, and and we sort of grew up on the Gold Coast, so that's our festival as well. Like, yeah, they, yeah. Uh, so many of our yeah. formative years were spent literally watching acts at that festival. So <laughs> yeah, it works on so many levels for us to be going back there. It's uh, mm -hmm. needless to say, it's a huge bucket list for us. Exciting guys, it's so exciting. You deserve yeah. it. You would have played in front of a lot of new audiences over the last, you know, six, seven months. So when do you know 
what's that moment in time, I guess, during a gig that you know that they're getting you, that you can start to see that, you know, because when we go see a new band, there's someone new on stage, uh, you're partly interested and partly not, and you might have a couple of beers mm. in your hand while you're waiting for the main act. But what's that moment that you know that, hey, these guys are starting, they're getting into us? Is there a moment in your set where you feel that sort of happens? It's different for every show, I think you'd agree, Dave. Yeah. But um, it's often like it's unquantifiable as far as a moment, I'd say. But you yeah. can feel it. Um, we all feel it. Uh, when they start getting it, that energizes us. And then you're in that cycle mm. of um, energizing each other. And the show becomes just so much better for it. But yeah, it's different to every show, to every venue, um, I'd yeah. say. So there's no yeah. particular song yeah, well, or moment in the set. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And like the Charlie Crockett stuff, um, we did mostly we did six songs. We did like thirty minutes, except one of the shows we played for forty five. We'd never done that before. So that was quite an interesting experience for us because we had to kind of squeeze in some kind of set arc in six songs. But we also had to do enough to to be ourselves and be authentic, but also capture as many people as we could as they were walking into venues. So that was yeah. really interesting because a lot of the time for an opening band, you might see people walk in, go to the bar and kind of start chatting. But for us, it was people were just walking in and walking towards the stage and watching and then watch the whole set. Mm. And a lot of mm. people would come up to us afterwards saying, we wished we'd known you guys were playing or who you were even because we came and we saw your last two songs or whatever. Um, so that was a different experience than say Tamworth where we got an hour and a half or an hour to really mm -hmm. warm up and get the crowd into it. But the best shows for us, for sure, are the ones where the crowd's dancing. If they're up, right up, pushed against the stage and dancing and we can really yeah. connect and really feel that audience, that's when it's like, we just go to a whole other level. So one of the best shows we played in the last 12 months was Riverboats. Um, that was three weeks ago, maybe. Uh, and I don't know how long ago it was. It might have been six weeks ago. But uh, it was one where we saw Brian, Brian and Curvis at. And uh, it was our crowd, you know, slightly, uh, it was eclectic. Lots of young people, lots of um, older people too, and lots of kind of middle people. Um, but it was just like a roots kind of community, roots based yeah. stuff. And we just, like at first people were a bit trepidatious, like who is this act? And within two or three songs, we've kind of had everyone moving. And uh, it was just, it was massive. It was a phenomenal show. And um, at one stage, Tani, we saw Casey Chambers off to the side of the show off to the side of the stage watching us and we'd never met her before and we were like holy shit um big fans massive fans of casey's and at one set, Tani jokingly said yeah like we're mid-set being starstruck and uh <laughs> Tani goes oh get casey out here as a joke and our tour manager danny he sort of ran backstage he'd been talking to her and said oh the guys want you up on stage and she didn't bat an eyelid she got straight up and walked down stage so the first time we'd said anything to her was when she walked out mid song to join us to play the rest of the song and improvise wow. the rest of the song without without oh, wow. Tani. Yeah. Oh, yeah, all, all the hug at the front, like that was the honestly the first moment we met Casey was on stage. Jeez, oh, yeah. oh, shit, is so and we jammed. <laughs> so yeah, we jammed with the song because we knew we had ten minutes left of the set. And we only had five minutes planned, so we, <laughs> we, <made the laughs> we just jammed. And, uh, Fantastic. We yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, when, when you do yeah. with Charlie, uh, like he's kind of more, he's different to you guys, obviously. Mm. So, but did being this, like, did you have you been influenced as songwriters from his style of stuff? Or you must definitely, I'd say, I'd say so. Definitely from yeah. him and from the people that he's influenced by as well. Which, if we're talking George Jones and parking or back sort of an, yeah, an older era but i think charlie himself was so impressive in so many ways um his obvious uh craft his songwriting was an eye-opener for us and something that we will aspire to his stage craft that was a huge thing i think mm -hmm. we took away but particularly charlie just his command of what he's doing his command of the audience the fact that he he feels uh, bigger than uh, just a human, like he's bigger than, you know, and it's been a while Present, since yeah. I think I've seen that, you know. So, um, yeah, he's, he's something else, and we, we all learned a lot from from him and the band, obviously, who are just amazing. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think that there's a lot of variety in what he does, and you might have heard the country-based songs, but he does a lot of soul stuff, and they okay. do some even slightly funk stuff. They do a lot of deep sort of southern blues as well. So we, over the course of an hour and a half, there's a lot of different genre tipping oh. the hats to. There's jam out sections. Cullen the so they toured a piano, an upright piano, and a Wurlitzer and a Hammond B3 organ with a Leslie speaker. <laughs> Oh, so, uh, and by the end, uh, on the hill, they had the Leslie cab out on the deck. You know, they're micing it up out, out on the deck, the running the cables through to the stage. Mm. Oh, Huge, oh, awesome Leslie operation. Up, piano, oh, oh, I've B3, got PTSD. Start, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The back's tweaking. And he played, tr- he played trumpet. So there was just so much going on that was so wonderful as music fans. Like these guys are music fans. Charlie yeah. is a music fan and all yeah. of his band is a music fan. From a songwriter's perspective, his word economy was really interesting to me. Like he, he has a real ability to get like almost like a Hemingway, you know, Hemingway way where it's like you cut, cut the fat, get just, just the essential information in each line. And, yeah. uh, and first, on first listening, you, you might miss something, right? But because the word economy seems so simple, you're like, oh, yeah, that's just a simple song, I guess. You go back and listen to it a few more times and you realize there's a, a much deeper kind of structure to it. That was really impressive. Yeah. Jackson Brown's similar to that, you know? Like, there's no fat words. There's no extra words that don't need to be there um, to get the point across, you know? Yeah. Well, Leonard Cohen. To- they say yeah. Leonard Cohen used to, used to just torture himself over words for – for days and days and days. Editing, just, right? Yeah, yeah, just to cut out. Don't need that word. Use that one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't get that's, past What's a more efficient true. way of saying this? You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like that's, I think that's evidence in Charlie's writing. I think, uh, yeah. you know, Time of the Cottonwood Tree is a good example. Ten Dollar Cowboy is a really good example. Really, really clever songwriting. Where he, you know, at first you're like, this guy's calling himself a Ten Dollar Cowboy. What the hell is this? But he's not at all. He's comparing himself as a songwriter to the like the brutal nature of getting on a, a bucking bull and getting thrown off all the time mm. and the fact that we're both out here just scraping out to make a living uh and there's, there's similarities between a ten dollar cowboy and what it is that i do you know yeah yeah um i love it i love really it interesting yeah it is it's mm. so cool and um there's so much to like about sweet talk i, I was watching a a number of your YouTube clips and just the fact before you start to play, you all sort of take that deep breath and calm the minds. And then it's just, it, you just don't see that in other bands. You just don't see that connection, that collective spirit. And um, I just love the fact that shit's happening and you're just saying yes to it. And um, yeah, it looks like Braggy's on the money, mate. Are you saying that the turnbuckles don't? don't? <laughs> One take of fucking intense love and energy and love. Mini little symphonistic guy like the Beach Boys. Uh, take all in. Alright. Here we go. Shake it out. Big breath in. Big breath out.
guys. I've, Rossi, I've heard. Guys, I've, heard yeah. I've heard that, that they they go in the dressing room and they pick their manager up and drop him and give him an atomic drop. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know the term buckles. Uh, <laughs> you are lucky. You they're are playing lucky. in the they're playing in the tote later in the year. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. Now we and, have uh, we have some pre-show rituals that we do that that get us connected as well. Like we've got a kind of like a little chant thing that we do every single show. And I think Soren, you, you a friend of yours was at the Brisbane show, and he said something about that connection. And you just don't see bands anymore, like mm. bands that yeah. are committed to being in that band. We have peers here that are, are in ten different bands. You know, yeah. and they play every night of the week in ten different bands, um, and that just would never work for us because what we're trying to do is create something really unique and something that has a real clear identity that stands on its own two feet. You know, and to do that, yeah, to do that, you have to develop that brotherhood. Like all of us are committed to this band, um, and yeah. we spend all of our time writing or working on music towards this one outcome, like going all in. You know, to do a a lot of work. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it takes everything. And and yeah. like, yeah, there's a lot of detail that those that people are like working across different bands. There's a lot of detail they're missing. There really is. There's oh, a lot yeah. of detail work. It's just so hard. There's so well, much. Just, it just makes you guys more real, and that comes across. Mm. You know, that's appreciated to hear, Braggy, because that is we feel that too, and that's sort of why we're doing yeah. it and why we keep it this way, rather than you know. I feel like mm. this is serious. Yeah, 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 and like, yeah, yeah. But there's that seriousness, but it's also that good-natured banter stuff, and not taking yourself too serious. So, but yeah, when oh, we comes, don't take when, ourselves seriously. <laughs> but when we it comes to the music, yeah. deadly serious. And yeah, uh, if, yeah. if there's a band traveling around the country in a van, Gallo's humor rears its ugly head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. and like you look at like we, you know the, all the music we love from the seventies and stuff that had a that had its tongue firmly planted in its cheek, you know, yeah. like the, like Kuda stuff, the Little Feet covers. I mean, even the Stones, like Sticky Fingers, mm. that cover, that's all funny, and it's like yeah. it's not rock and roll yeah. shouldn't be serious. God, it's no. the death of it if it is. I mean, heavy yeah. metal. This is what's so good about metal. That that's it. heavy metal is fully aware of what it is. They, it realizes it's that it's extreme theater, yeah, and it's it's absurd. The theater of the absurd, but in that, like, have you ever been to a more fun, like, like forgiving crowd than a heavy metal crowd? Like, they're the nicest right. people on the planet because yeah, they com- they get this incredible aggressive theater. You know, they're a community, right? They're all there because the yeah. only way yeah. they can find music that they like yeah. is by looking for it. And when they find it, they're all like-minded. They've, the metal crowds look scary, but they are exactly what you say. You know? Yeah, they're the best. Yeah. They're the worst crowds are the uh, like, 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 shoe, uh, like not shoe guys, but like uh, hipster indie indie crowds. That's the oh. stuff where it's like you bump into someone and they give you a real greasy look, you know. But you bump yeah. into someone in a metal crowd, and they're like, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, like, yeah. But we have that. Some we jazz crowds are the, some jazz sure. crowds are the same as that. Yeah, yeah a bit yeah. they, they bit take the, they take the art part, they take the art too seriously, and they forget that it's you know a lot of this stuff needs to be tongue in cheek. I mean, the human condition, like you know, like if you want to be authentic, like we are actually just kind of fairly relaxed, joking. Or we joke around all the time. We fuck around, and 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 we're and so that's got to come across in the music. Like we're not sad yeah. boys staring at our shoes, crying into our milk. You know, that's part of the <laughs> authenticity. You know, this is us yeah. through the music. Yeah. I was at yeah. a metal show in Dallas and stood there and there was this guy behind us. He goes, Give me, uh, you're in the way. I turned around and said, oh, sorry, mate. When he realised we're Australian, he was all over us, right? But then, mm. not long after that, I realised I was in a bar full of people who were carrying. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, right. okay. Uh, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's not, get, let, let's not get on the wrong side. Yeah, hey, um, I, had, <laughs> yeah, I, I had the pleasure, um, Dave and Soren, while I was away, that um, there's an up-and-coming band called Rail Motor that gave me a bit of a preview of their next release. And um, they may give you a bit of a run for your money in the pl- so. southern blues sort of rocky sort of... What are they called, Curly? Rail, Rail Motor. Motor. Yeah, and... That's Braggy. And I hunt them down. 
Yeah, hunt them down. So Braggy's got to kill them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And and Braggy, I do have to say that any rail motor is an amazing addition to rail motor. So she's part um, of the family. She well. goes all right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah so I'd love to check it out. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. If you want. <laughs> <laughs> Braggy Such gets very. Sure. Uh, Braggy gets very right? subtle about his music. That's all, Soren. So. Um, he, wait till I, I'm I, happy with this one. Wait, wait till this one comes out, Soren. Don't, don't, yeah, I'm happy with this one. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I've got well, someone well, making well, a film clip at the moment, huh? What's it called? And when's it out? I think we're going to call it 11 because it's just a good number. <laughs> all right, <laughs> we're, we're I like, see. I see. I've just clocked what's going on here. Yeah, we're all, all right. we're all 11 uh, right, gotcha, gotcha. So I think we're going to call it 11 and put in 12. Songs on yeah, there. and Braggy, I <laughs> bet you you yeah. didn't think of doing a documentary while you're up in Agnes Waters <laughs> recording it. No, but yeah. I've got two of Ruby's. Well, this uh, is the, this... daughter, two of my daughter's friends making the clip for the first for the first single. And they're going to make yeah. it at their, at their house party, and they 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 live in a share house, and it, it's like they've got one of every letter, like LGBTQ. They've got one of every letter, and it's so it's going to be killer film clip, I reckon. <laughs> and they're all artists, so anyway, yeah. can't wait to see what they do. Yeah, it's, this is the world we live in, you know. We gotta, we gotta, we got you gotta make visual content to go across, go with it. You know? Yeah, it's um, yeah. part of the game. So we're just trying to figure out how to do that more regularly, more efficiently. Thirty you know? seconds for Instagram, a minute for TikTok. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, man. Man. Those beasts necessary are evil. Beasts. Yeah. Hungry, hungry uh, beasts. Hey, can no, I just talk about can't. footy before we go? Are we going soon? Or well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I was just about to wind up, so talk about footy. I just thought it was funny how you and our old blokes you spent all that money, went to Vegas and got 42000 and then the AFL just played Sydney versus Melbourne in Sydney and got more people. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was interesting. When we flew out to Japan, there was all the charter flights going to Vegas. Yeah, and the yeah. airport was just overrun with them. So, out of that forty-two thousand in the stadium, I reckon thirty thousand would have either been as mm. Aussies or yeah. commies that have flown over for the game. But, yeah. but I will point out that if you want to go and see the AFL, you don't have to leave the country. No, <laughs> ever, ever. <laughs> <laughs> Tough Quickly, yeah, before we right. go, boys, before we go, boys, we are not actually finished spruiking our words. Okay, There's sorry. A, so, so oh, spruik quick away. second. We've actually got a, a single coming out this Friday with a guy called Andy Gollidge. I'm not sure if you guys know. I know Andy know. Gollidge. Yeah. Yeah. Andy Gollidge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've done a track with Andy. We actually did some backing vocals on, on a song that's coming out. I think it might be called Me and My Loving Myself. Loving myself. I think. Loving Myself. Yeah. So this Friday, check it out. It's going to be really cool. It's a really cool song. We love Andy. You should have him on if you haven't already. Well done. Save it on Spotify. That's it. that's always a huge help for artists. So yeah. Double L E D G E. 
Uh, yes. Too easy. Yeah. I'll make sure it's in the show notes, boys. So you'll love uh, it, fellas. You'll love it. Okay. Do it. We maybe it might be. Able, it's, it comes out on Friday, Curly. You might be able to whack it in the show. Yeah. The yeah. Show. If um, so it comes out on Friday. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I might to put back and release on Saturday, maybe just to make sure I get yeah. it in there. Yeah, it sounds good, yeah. guys. What a great chat! We just love having you guys on the show. One of the things that happened after we finished recording last time and Braggy had to go to eat his dinner and you guys said the uh, fatal words. What were they, Rossi? That Braggy knows his shit came out yeah, of your mouth. Funny. And um, we were telling <laughs> Braggy, we were telling Braggy that the very next week that, oh, Sweet Talk gave you a bit of a compliment, mate, but... You know, you didn't hang around, so you can't hear it. So. <laughs> man's got to eat. A man's got to no, eat. Absolutely, and, uh, absolutely. It's, um, it's always good to, to hear the banter between people that know their shit. Well, so it's, I, it's, I just think I, pro I probably should just make another prediction because, you know, I made the last one. Look, what, look how far we've come. So, yeah, you know, well, I'll just say maybe guys go to Europe and then get picked up by a label. And you can cut that and drop I like it. That. You, you gotta put it out there. I'll put you gotta put you gotta say it, otherwise you do. You and then I can talk yeah, myself. We like talk about more. this. We talk about this all the time. We manifest reality. <laughs> like yeah. We had a, we, we sat around at, at a festival recently, sitting in a in a circle. I'm like, manifest reality, boys. And it's like that's we it. are. Like that's how you do it. You visualize the Schwarzenegger thing. Visualize, yeah. see yourself there, and then <laughs> find a way to get there. Start manifesting better that. catering in Europe. <laughs> What? Yes. Medicator in general would be good for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Medicator in general would be good for us. Absolutely. Yeah. A bottle of water or two wouldn't hurt occasionally. I can't believe it's yeah. alcohol. So easy it's so it's funny. We cocaine. must we must have a reputation because our writer is just beer and tequila, and we, yeah, water would be nice if anyone's <laughs> listening. <laughs> <laughs> we never have any. Ever. Uh, it's something about the music, I guess. They assume it's yeah, just the music. And whiskey. And, <laughs> music includes yeah. uh, whiskey and tequila. Uh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. 90% of our yeah. songs are about drinking, probably, so that doesn't help me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, next on next week, guys, fantastic having you here. Next week's show, we have a gentleman called Link Phelps joining us, and he Ooh. is an up-and-coming country music artist and we're also being joined by big stew the country music correspondent because he knows link and it should be a good show so um that's our next week's show but this one's been fantastic if you've enjoyed the episode you, you know what to do like subscribe leave a review it all helps we're on youtube facebook tiktok all of sweet talks links will be in the show notes so please check them out these guys are just authentic and awesome and lyrics from the playlist this week, and it's um, from, guess who, Lizzie Jack and the Beanstalks. It's from that great song that I love, Before I Go. And it's uh, it's really apt at the moment with the Sweet Talk Boys heading to Europe. So the lyric is, time for me to hit the road, so take a picture of us all before you go. That's it. That's Curly. Yeah. That's Rossi, Braggy, Soren, and the Spirit Molecule from Sweet Talk. Thanks, guys, for joining us tonight, and we'll see everyone else uh, next week. <laughs> Thanks. See you later on. Love it, guys. Always a pleasure. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Did anybody bring sunscreen? It's getting way too hot. Did you wanna go swimming? I saw a pretty good spot On the way to the campsite I'm sorry I got lost I should've turned right at the blue sign Across the road from the shops Did anybody bring a charger? My phone's nearly dead And have you seen my sunglasses? I think they're in the tent And 
this trick is way too strong It's going straight to my head I should have known you always pulled with a heavy hand I don't want to go home But I gotta work tomorrow Time for me to hit the road Take a picture of the soul